I always fun with these names. Eyjafjalla Jökull. Langisjökull. Hjellinga Hjell. Welcome to the highlands of Iceland. Let's explore some of the favorite locations for outdoor enthusiasts, photographers and filmmakers. Well, good morning from Iceland and yes, it is very early in the morning, but thanks so much for joining this little tour to these very impressive and photogenic places in the highlands. I will try to keep it short, give you a little bit of information of how to get there, a little bit of fun facts and what you can shoot there. Okay, so this must be one of my new favorite locations, Hjellinga Pjek, which is just off F35 in the middle of the highlands, in the middle of Iceland basically. And it's fairly tricky to get here if you don't have a 4x4 car. Up to the campground it's okay, but then it goes uphill with a very, very bumpy uh, road with carved in lanes and uh, you definitely need some clearance and a 4x4 vehicle in order to get uphill. But once you're here, and I got here like at 3 a.m. in the morning in the fog and it was like, I don't know where I am, but once it cleared up, it is absolutely mesmerizing because you have these hills, which is like an old volcanic system here with these rivers carved in and then the geothermal activity all around. So you have the steam basically flying through these little valleys and it's very very photogenic especially if the sun is shining and if you have a green moss as well uh, it just gives a really nice texture and color dynamic in, in in the image anything else you need to know about this let's see oh yeah uh, a wide angle lens it's absolutely a must to really capture the the width of this of these this area it's basically like not even a wide angle lens will help you. Maybe a 360 camera. You come down this hill there and then you have this nice viewpoint where you can decide you have different hiking trails that you can take. I've been exploring two so far and I'm not done yet here. Let's go. All right, now I'm hiking up to Hangifoss, which is located in the east of Iceland and ranks in the top three of the tallest waterfalls in Iceland with 118 meters and it's actually quite accessible. It's just a 30 minute drive from Igestadi which is like the largest town here in the east and it's just a two to two and a half kilometer hike which should take you like 40 minutes one way and then on your hike there you also come across its smaller sibling Leedlandesfoss which is defined by its tilted basalt columns. Really pretty to look at as well. I think I'm here almost. So one of the standard compositions you want to get at this location is just go to the river here, go to a low point and then capture the flowing water, basically getting around the, the big waterfall and I think you will get a nice photo or video. Easy as that. Okay, now we are at Laki, which is the site of one of the biggest 
and largest volcanic eruptions in recorded history. And in 1783 and 84, this fissure eruption, and you see these little volcanoes here where the fissure cracked open, and I'm on top of Laki right now, and it goes in both directions, was so devastating, it, especially the ash, the toxic ash that came down on Iceland, but also to, in Europe, um, caused crop failure and actually famine and starvation in many countries. Amongst those, France. And in around the same time, the French Revolution was kicked off. So people say that actually this eruption had a play in the revolution of France. Viva la Revolution! But it is about a one and a half hour drive from road one and you need to ford some rivers, so be mindful of that. I really hope that the sun is gonna pop at some point uh, so that it illuminates these craters a little bit, but this is where we're supposed to wake up. Six o'clock, got here a little earlier. And on your way there, you can also stop by at a very special canyon. Next location up is Fjordrogu Canyon. I was here in winter 2018 and couldn't pronounce the name. I hope it's a little better by now. But it's this beautiful canyon you may know from Game of Thrones or Justin Bieber music video. Uh, maybe a little bit of a turn off, but it's definitely worth coming out here. I wouldn't count it as Highlands, but if you're in this area, definitely check it out. Uh, you're allowed to fly drones here. It has actually a sign there that says, don't fly over people, don't disturb wildlife, but you can fly drones, so that's great. You have like a little bit of a hiking path up here with two viewing points. It's worth going to the end one because you can really look nicely into the canyon. The end part of the road over here that gets you here is a little bumpy, but you should be fine if you have a 4x4 for sure. Also, they have facilities, toilets there, um, but still, let me show you a hilarious sign. <laughs> Well, don't do that. No wild pooping here. It's private land. Um, but definitely worth getting out here. I'm here right now. It's 11.18, perfect for sunset. And it's just beautiful. Actually, this bedrock of this canyon is supposedly two million years old um, because it's been carved out here by the river. Okay, now we are at Landmänner Lauge, which is possibly the most popular hiking destination in Iceland and stands synonym for the highlands. You have these beautiful colored mountains due to the mineral content in them and this massive, massive lava field as well as like little rivers going through the canyons here and it's absolutely gorgeous. Pick a day when it's sunny um, so that these canyons are illuminated. I'm right now on top of Blaunengush, which is one of the tallest mountains you can hike here. It's, it's a little bit of a tricky hike, but I think anyone who's fit and a little bit skilled in just like walking on rocks, you'll be fine. You also have a geothermal hotspot down there and it, at the campground, which is down in this valley here, you also can take a dip in the hot tub. To get here to drive down the F208, um, coming up from the north is the easier way come from the south you have to go through rivers and need a car with high clearance and a snorkel likely so I recommend coming up from the north with it which comes from the F26 uh, and it is just a very bumpy road it takes about two hours from F26 and then you're here and I recommend spending a couple of days you can even hike from here to Thorsmerk which we'll talk about next turns out that if you come down Blaunichul on the other side, you have to ford this river barefoot. It was a good refreshment after that steep hike. Don't say I didn't warn you. Quick bonus tip, as you come or go to Landmalalogu, uh, go drive up from F208 to Blaulus which it means Blue Lake. And it is absolutely magnificent. Try to come here at sunset or sunrise and you have this amazing vista with the highlands in the background and this crater lake. Just gorgeous, just freaking gorgeous.
Thorsmerk, the Valley of Thor, one of the locations I was looking forward to the most. It's um, just like a half an hour drive, I would say, off road one. You just turn left when you come from uh, Reykjavik, left at Seljansfoss and just drive in. There are a couple of rivers you have to take and then there is Crossa. Don't take Crossa unless you have like a real mountain vehicle. Here we go, the river one. And now the excursion bus has to pull them out. Now, I'm up here on Val, uh, Valanuke, um, which is a mountain peak, what does it say? 458 meters high. Um, it's a fairly built out ascent, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but what really signifies Thorsmerk are these rivers that are really going on all around you right now. Um, through the valleys and if you have nice light sunset or sunrise uh, you can stand on top of one of these little pillars here or like some edges and get some really really impressive photos of video what else what else what else what else do we want to know on a clear day you also see in the background if that name sounds familiar that was the volcano that erupted in 2010 i believe and put all the air traffic between Europe and the US and Americas to a complete standstill. And if you hike 55 kilometers this way, you go to Lentmelaloge. It takes four days to get there. Usually they recommend going from there to Thursmark. Maybe one day I will do that. Now, I realized that there are too many beautiful locations in the highlands of Iceland, so I had to split this video into two. You could check out part number two right here. And also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I don't know why not. But as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this extremely beautiful planet. Bye-bye.